let's just warm up with the following. Last week we looked at using integration by parts to integrate sine squared of x. So I want to do it a little more generally. I'm going to do sine to the m of x. And this is what is uh, usually called a reduction formula because we're not going to get just some final answer. We're just going to reduce it to another interval. And you can do this with uh, most of the trig functions. Uh, and, and these end up being very handy. And if you open up uh, a real calculus text, usually on the inside cover, uh, well, maybe on the front they just have geometric formulas. But on the back, they have trig uh, and then some diff derivatives and then some integral tables. Uh, and usually you will see a whole bunch of these reduction formulas in those tables. So here's the way we're going to attack this. We're going to use integration by part. And we're going to model it after the way we did sine squared. Remember when we did sine squared, we took the sines and we broke them up. Well, we sine squared. We did sine and sine, exactly. Okay. What's your sign? Now here's the, the question. How should we break up sine to the end? So when it was sine squared, we made it sine sine. So there's at least three different ways I can think to break it up from it. One, break it in half. Right? Because you took two and you broke it in half. But n is, you know, could be even, could be odd, so don't really want to break it in half if it's odd. So that's a bad idea. Uh, what about we could take one out, because sine sine, there's at least a one sine to the one, one, and then m minus one in the other. Okay, but then there's two ways to do that. You can put the, the sine here and the sine to the m minus one here, or you can put the sine to the m minus one here and the sine over here. So how do you decide which one you should do? Well, I'll give you a hint. After we make the decision, I'm going to write these letters down. And how am I going to get these, this next line? Well, to go from u to du, I have to differentiate. To go from dv to v, I have to integrate. Now, if I put the sine to the m minus 1 over here, I have to integrate it. If I put it over here, I have to differentiate it. Which would you rather do? Differentiate. OK, so we'll put it there. So we make decisions not based on any sort of logic, just based on being lazy and ignorant. OK, good, good, just so we understand where we're coming from. OK, so we want to differentiate sine of the m minus 1 of x. You guys claim you could do it. So you put it over there. So what is it? Now let's see. m minus 1. No, sine of x. <laughs> sine of x times cosine of x? Dx? Am I missing anything? No, remember it's right, using the power rule and the chain rule here. So m minus 1 comes down, still gets raised to the m minus 2, times the derivative of sine, which is cosine. Okay, not bad. Okay, now the Easy part, we're going to integrate sine. Okay. Let's see what happens. Let's see, we get uv, so minus sine to the m minus 1 of x times cosine of x, minus the integral of v du. So let's see here. I get an extra minus that I can throw out front. And actually, I have an extra m minus 1 that I can throw out front. And I, let's see, now I get a sine to the m minus 2 of x. And then I have a cosine and a cosine. Gives me a cosine squared. Yes. Now I'll bet you a buffalo nickel that Dina knows the next step. Substitute. 
What do I substitute? Ah, very good. Anybody got a buffalo nickel for me? So let me uh, use one of my favorite things, which is to uh, abbreviate. So those of you who were here last year know I really enjoy simplifying expressions with sines and cosines with S's and C's. So this becomes minus S to the M minus 1 times C plus m minus 1 times the integral of s to the m minus 2. And then, well, cosine squared became 1 minus sine squared, so 1 minus s squared. Okay. So let's see what we can do. What, what, uh, what's a good idea? Distribute and break it into separate intervals. Fair enough. Okay, so let's see here. So the first one we'll just get the integral of s to the m minus 2 dx. And then we get minus the integral of s to the m minus 2 times s squared, which is s to the m. Now if we call our original integral i, then we've actually recovered our original integral. That's the second half here, right? Integral s to the n. I actually just get minus i. Okay. Now, when I distribute this m minus 1 through, I'll end up with minus m minus 1 i's which I can then add to the other side. So I'm going to get, I'll write it out, okay. more transparent. We get m minus 1 integral s to the m minus 1 dx minus m minus 1 times i. Remember the trick with this is always the same. Once you isolate your i, you add it to the other side. And if I have m minus 1 i's and I get one more i, how many i's do I have? I have two i's. Very good. <laughs> I have m minus 1 and I add them over. If I have m minus 1 plus 1, m i's. So m i. So if I divide by m, I'm going to solve to the integral I want. So I get minus s to the m minus 1 c over m plus m minus 1 over m integral s to the m minus 2 dx. If you want, you can put, replace your s's and c's with sines and cosines. Okay. So this is what we call a reduction formula. We've taken an integral we didn't know how to solve, and we didn't solve it, but we reduced it to the integral of a simpler function. Right? This was s to the fourth, this, you know, sine to the fourth, this is now sine squared. Of course, once you get to sine squared, we do have an answer. By the way, you can also, you know, once you get down to here, this is again, of, again of this form. So you can apply the reduction formula again. So what you can do is con you can iterate this formula over and over and over again to take something really big like sine to the tenth or sine to the hundredth and just keep reducing it down. Not that I'd want to do that by hand. It's a formula, right? It, it works. Not everything useful is nice. Any questions on that? Okay. Why don't we try another one? That's a nasty guy. Any 
не одеться. Should we substitute away? If I say, of course, take of, uh, the root of the square root, so it's going to be one, one half the power. Okay, so we don't like square roots. Fair enough. And uh, if I multiply y times y, you know, minus uh, y to the four of y to the fourth power? Yeah. Where does y to the fourth coming from? I mean, if I multiply y times y2 minus y. Ah, oh, you want to distribute it? Yeah. Am I allowed to do that? If it was a square root sign, would you be allowed to do that? No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Right? First come parentheses, then exponents, then you can do my dear Aunt Sally, right? Then you so you can't move this in until you've evaluated the exponent. Uh, but even if we got it in, it probably wouldn't be so, so helpful. Here would be you know, my first intuition. Okay, somehow this, this is nasty. Right? Uh, problem is, what happens when, when we differentiate this? You end up with this 3y squared, and it somehow isn't quite nice enough. Um, so you already see that there's, there's maybe a problem. The square root is going to be nasty. Uh, so I want to show you a trick here that is not, I think, obvious. Okay, now this looks worse. Because now when you, you know, you think, oh, if I differentiate, this is going to be really bad. But let's, let's again play a trick. Instead of differentiating at this point, let's square both sides. Now I'm back where I'm very happy, because I don't have the square root to deal with. Now if I differentiate, when I do 2u, I, I can't stop there anymore, right? It actually becomes 2u du dx, or du dy. So when I differentiate this to get du, I actually get uh, well, this, I mean, this is quite fine. Uh, so 2u du equals 3y squared. Right. You think about if you put the the dy dx on the other side, I mean the dy on the other side, right? You have two u du dy, which is what happens when you use the chain rule. Right. Equals three y squared. Okay, so I move the dy over. Okay, so this means that right, I can replace uh, a dy by 2u du divided by 3y squared. Okay, now this looks just miserable. Absolutely miserable. But, let's throw this, this in and see what happens. So first, this dy I replace by 2u du over 3y squared. That's just my dy. <laughs> Divided by, well, let's see, uh, I guess I'll, I'll throw a y down here. And then this, ah, uh, this is the whole thing I substituted away. This just became an easy. Okay, so I'll move this to the right. So I integrate. This fraction divided by yu, and I can simplify that a little bit. So this u will cancel with the top u. That's not so bad. 
and this y will get sucked up into that y squared. Well, it'll become yk. Okay, and I can take this two thirds out. So I get two thirds du over y cubed. That's not a u. Now, y cubed is no good, right? I don't want y cubed, I want a function of u. How can I get a function of u for y cubed? And I have this expression. Add one to both sides, and I get u squared plus one equals y cubed. So I can actually rewrite this as two thirds, the integral of one over u squared plus 1 du. And what is the antiderivative of 1 over u squared plus 1? Arctan. Arctan. Yes. And then, of course, we can uh, unsubstitute. U was uh, the square root of y cubed minus one. All right, so this is what I would call tricky. This takes some practice. This takes a little bit of practice to get used to. But once you get it, it you know, it's not so bad. And that is why I've given you this nice worksheet that has a lot of problems. And almost all of them, the substitution will not be straightforward. You will have to think a little bit different. Oh, yeah, put the square root in there. And then once you do that, say, okay, let me get rid of the square root. And then later on, perhaps have to fiddle with things to get rid of your original variable. So you'll get a lot of practice. Please come and ask me for a lot of help. Because those things are tricky. And don't wait till the last minute. Because some of them take some time. But I work them all so they can be done. I promise you. And I want to do it two different ways. I think it's instructive. Well, I'm the instructor. More functions that you just never would have thought existed. <laughs> Cosine of the natural log? Come on. Okay. Uh, well, we have two main methods we use right now, integration by parts and substitution. Uh, which one do you want to try first? Parts? Okay. U, V, what's my U? Uh, be very careful, this is not cosine of x times ln of x. Oh, yeah. This is cosine of ln of x. So you cosine of x. Yeah, there's not really much of a choice here, is there? <laughs> there's just one function lying around. Bit of a trick question. Okay. Now, of course, the nice thing is we've taken this integral that we didn't have any idea how to solve and turned it into a differentiation problem. Okay. What's the derivative of cosine of ln of x? Minus sine of ln of x. Minus sine of ln of x, yep. Times the derivative of ln of x. Times the derivative of ln of x. And of course the other side is the easy side. So let's see what we get. We get uv, so x cosine of ln of x 
minus the integral of v du. So let's see. There's a minus that will pop out. I have an x times a 1 over x. Those cancel. And I'm just left with a sign of element of x. Oh, I guess I'm missing a dx. Aha! So I started with cosine of element of x, and I ended up with sine of element of x. What does that suggest we should do? Play the what game? The, the I game, right? <laughs> right? It, it happens a lot with these sines and cosines, because when you do the integration by parts, you tend to replace sines with cosines and cosines with sines. So after you do it twice, you'll be back, perhaps, to your original function. Right? So we'll call this I, because we know later we should have to use that. Okay, so let's, let's so integrate the sine of ln of x down here. We'll just copy everything we did, except cosines will turn into sines. derivative of the sine of ln of x. And equals x. So this becomes uv, so x sine of ln of x minus the integral of x, okay, times 1 over x goes away. Is left with cosine of ln of x dx. And this, of course, is our i. Got my eye on you. Okay, so now I can just back up top. So let's see, I have x cosine of ln of x and an x sine of ln of x. I'll just back around next. Cosine of ln of x plus sine of ln of x. Okay. And then I have minus r. So x cosine of ln of x plus x sine of ln of x minus i. Now I can play my game. I add i to both sides, so I get a 2i over here, and then I divide by 2. So i equals a half x cosine of ln of x plus sine of ln of x. Voila. Feels like a lot of work, yeah? yeah. Let's try it again with substitution. By the way, anybody try to look at the videos? Or on my I just it'd be nice to know if they're working. So let's try this again. So we used integration by parts. By the way, I, I'm really proud of one of the titles of the video, the one on integration by parts. Uh, I, the title is, <laughs> what do you get when you cross a beam with an antiderivative? I can't say it. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. The lecture is on integration by parts. What do you get when you cross a beam with an anti root? What is it? 
you kids just don't have a toilet humor in your brains anymore. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> <laughs> All you watching at home, uh, hopefully you guys can figure this out. Beans and antiderivatives, integration by parts. Uh, I get it. Ah, I got it, it finally! <laughs> <laughs> See, it's funny, right? <laughs> okay, so we tried integration by parts, let's try substitution. What, what should I substitute here? What's the only reasonable thing to substitute away? Ln, yeah? I mean, you have, this, you have this composition of functions, right? Cosine of ln of x. Okay, so. So what's my, my dx going to be? Let's see. If I differentiate, I get 1 over x dx. And so dx is going to be x du. Right, so if I try to plug that in, then I get cosine of u times x du. And this isn't this isn't wonderful. Because I still got this x lying around. How can I replace x with u? Sub u. Yeah. U equals ln of x. What is x equal? I can actually rewrite it. Integral cosine of u times e to the u. And now this is something that we've, or close to something that we've looked at, I think. Uh, in any case, it, it should resolve with the similar sort of trick now, namely integration by parts twice. So I want to show you something, and feel free to ignore this if, if it is just complete nonsense to you. But uh, do you recall that I showed you this trick for things of this form, where you put the polynomial on the left and the exponential on the right, and this would also work with the trig function. And you differentiate until you get to zero, and you integrate as many times as you differentiated. And then you draw little lines, make plus minuses, and then you can just read the answer off. Right? So this is x cubed e to the x minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6x e to the x minus 6 e to the x plus c. And I told you I was trying to think of a way to use this also for problems where you don't just have a polynomial here. And I, I, I did it. I, I figured it out this last weekend. And you can use them on, on problems just like this. Okay? You just have to keep in mind that you're not going to differentiate until you get to zero. You have to differentiate until you get back to the same product, plus or minus. I don't worry about minuses and pluses. So for instance, with this one, well, I, I still have to figure out which one is my u and which one is my, my dv. But I use that same line to Africa to tackle elephants. The trig comes before the exponential. So I put the cosine over here and e to u on the other side. And I differentiate. When I differentiate, I get minus sign. When I integrate, I get e to u. Then I differentiate again because I don't have the same product. But when I differentiate again, I get minus cosine and I get e to the u. And now, up to this minus sign, which I don't care about, I have the same product as I had on the first line. Okay? So this thing is just going to repeat cosine, sine, cosine, sine, cosine, sine. So this actually is telling me, whenever this happens, that I'm playing the I game. The 
accounts. So what I do, I draw my lines. And those terms I will have at the beginning. And then, to get my i, I just look at the coefficients here. Okay. When I multiply this together, I'm going to get a minus 1 coefficient. Right. So minus, and just a plus 1, minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. Which tells me that my, remember every time over here we got like a minus i? Okay. Well, that's the, that's the minus 1 coming from this product. So it tells me that I'm going to add the i to the other side, and well, 1i plus 1i will become 2i, so I'll have to divide by 2 in the end. So the way this will resolve, okay, well, there's my divide by 2, and then I just put these together. Cosine of u e to the u minus uh, minus minus plus sine of u. You can actually do that whole I game in a very short fashion, which is, which is nice. Uh, you can even use it over here if you're willing to accept an even more difficult rule. Uh, but maybe maybe I'll not talk about it right now. But. Uh, yeah, whenever you are in this sort of situation, Turing and exponential, even with logs, whatever, where you get to a point where you can repeat, play the I game. You just use the first two, and then this tells you the coefficient of the I on the right side. You add it over to get it on the left side, and that gives you your denominator. I can give you a general formula, but I don't think you probably care. So it's kind of fun. Yeah, Jeff? Oh, so by the way, now you can you can resolve the the integral by plugging u back in, which in a few nice places. Okay, so you, you still have the cosine of ln of x, but now e to the ln of x is just x. And yeah, that's the same thing that we got. I just pulled the x out over here.
So let's see, you get 1 over ln of 3 times uh, cosine of x, 3 to the x, cosine of x, minus, minus is plus, 1 over ln of 3 squared, uh, 3 to the x, sine of x. And now here comes the, the fun part, the i. How many i's do you get? You get minus 1 over ln of 3 squared i's. So this is i. It's minus 1 over ln of 3 squared. Don't worry about the plus here. So I have to add this to the other side. 1 over ln of 3, oh, I infer in my i. i plus 1 over ln 3 squared i's equals 1 over ln of 3, 3 to the x, cosine of x, plus 1 over ln of 3 squared now all these one overs is really irritating. So I'm just going to multiply everything in sight by ln of 3 squared. That will clear all the fractions. Yeah? Is that okay? Oh, you guys look stuck. Stop for a second. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah? And Bill. Huh? No, I'm not okay. You're, you're not okay? Where are we stuck? Back, back. Where, tell me where you're confused. I can see it in your faces. Second. <laughs> Just more practice. Yo, yo, more practice, of course. Okay. Uh, is there a specific point you're thinking, yeah, I'm definitely lost? Just, uh, we stop there when we see the last and the first one similar. Exactly, when they're the same up to a constant. Uh, just the cosine, not this part. I yeah, mean, just the, the cosine and the 3 to the x. Yeah, yeah. So, so those those parts are the same. You're cosine oh. 3 to the x, cosine 3 to the x. And the rest of it is just. Both of them. Because I, I see you, uh, the first one, cosine x. Lead to the x, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, the last one, uh, cosine x, is it 3 to the x? Or That's 3 1 to the x. over the This is just a constant, right? ln of 3 squared is just a number. Oh. Right? That's why I don't worry about it. Might as well, it's just like a minus. So I don't care. Yeah. So I don't worry about these constants. I just know that these constants are going to affect the coefficient in front of my i at the end. Right? All the times we've done this before, our coefficient was just minus i, and then you add it over and you got 2i and you divide it by 2. Here you can see you actually can divide by something else when you play the i game. Sometimes you don't have two i's. You mentioned that. You had 1 plus 1 over element of 3 squared i's. That would make it very hard to see. Alright. Well, let me, let me play this trick now where I'm going to multiply through by element of 3 squared just to, to get rid of fractions. Okay. So then I get ln of 3 squared i plus i. So I, I just multiply through on the left. And on the right, when I have ln of 3 squared, it kills one of them. So ln of 3, 3 to the x cosine of x plus, now this one dies, 3 to the x sine of x. Okay, so that feels a little bit better. Now I'm going to factor an i out here. Because right? I really want to get i isolated. So I get i times ln of 3 squared plus 1 equals, all right, let me simplify just a little bit. Let me pull this 3 to the x out. Okay, so I get ln of 3 cosine of x plus sine of x. And that's 3 to the x. And now I divide by 1 plus ln of 3 squared to solve for mine. So 1 over ln of 3 squared plus 1, just some constant, right, times 3 to the x. And then you have times ln of 3 cosine of x plus 
find x. Right? And then, of course, we have our constant of integration. Now, if you were clever, you can actually figure out what this coefficient you're going to get is just by looking at these coefficients here. It's already built in. And you can even write down a formula for it. But I think it's good to actually try it. Try putting just an A here. Right? Like A cosine of x and then B three of the x. And try to figure out what the coefficient is going to be. When you I mean because you'll have to do this out. You'll get well you'll get A B times I. Okay? You'll get plus A B times I. And you'll subtract and you'll get I minus AB times I, and then you'll factor, and you'll get I times 1 minus AB, and then you'll divide by 1 minus AB. So it's actually the coefficient of 1 minus AB. So you can always, you can always play this game. So uh, good, good stuff to practice there. Let's see. Uh, 10 more minutes? Let's, let's do uh, the integrating factors now. One of yeah, we'll time. I'm hoping that you're getting enough examples to, to have some sense of how to do these things when you sit down on your own. I know this comes very quickly. But the nice thing is because we're recording it, you can go back later and watch these things again. In slow motion. You know, you can watch. Why? That should be slow enough. Okay. So let's look at the following differential equation. This is a nice first order linear differential equation. First order, that's just one derivative. Linear because when you look at the derivatives, Right? In front of them are just functions of t. And on the right side, it's just a function of t. And last week, on Thursday, we introduced a method for solving first order linear differential equations. It's called this integrating factor. The way you did it is by utilizing the following two formulas. First, compute this integrating factor u of t, which is e to the integral of p of t, and, well, I'll remind you what this is in a second. And then you use this to compute y, which ended up being the integral of u of t times g of t dt plus a constant divided by u of t. Now this u of t that you came up with was based on this p of t. And this p of t comes from always writing your differential equation in the following form. This, by the way, also gives you a g. So what this tells us is that, well, this isn't in the right form. We need to get it into the right form. How do we get in the right form? Well. In the right form, well, we got this problem. We got a coefficient in front of the y prime. We're not supposed to have a coefficient. So let's just divide by it. Divide by t squared. I can do it. Can't stop me. So I replace this with y prime minus 3 over ty equals 1 over t. Now I can compute my integrating factor, u of t. Or at least I can try. So here we get e to the integral of, well, our p of t is now minus 3 over t. So well, let's see here. 
I have a minus 3 that I can pull out. So you have e to the minus 3 integral of well, 1 over t is just t to the minus 1. So what's the integral of t to the minus 1? How about absolute value of t? So we have p to the minus 3 ln absolute value of t. And we don't worry about the plus c because we can choose any of the integrating factors we want. And what is this going to be? Well, let me simplify the problem for you. Let's say we're only looking at t greater than 0. So I can drop these absolute values. Does that help you? So it gives us our integrating factor. And now we can plug it into this one. So we get y equals the integral of t to the minus 3 times g of t. g of t is 1 over t. So that's t to the minus 1. t plus c over u of t, which is t to the minus 3. Now this is becoming not so bad. t to the minus 3 times t to the minus 1 is t to the minus 4. Okay. What's the integral of t to the minus 4? Right? It's a sum on the top of just one term on the box. So we can break this up as two fractions. Minus a third t to the minus 3 over t to the minus 3 plus c over t to the minus 3. So these cancel. We get minus a third plus, well, c over t to the minus 3, but I don't like those minuses. I can just bring it to the top and I get rid of the minus. So constant times. There's our general solution. Not that bad, right? That's pretty nice. Okay. And if we want to check whether or not we made a mistake, you can take this general solution and plug it into the differential equation and see if you actually get what you're supposed to get. Put it into this form. Okay, so you get in that form. Now you find your integrating factor, u of t. Okay, and it's just this function, e to the integral of p of t. Okay, so that's what we did here. That's the u of t calculation. So we ended up with t to the minus. Once you do that, now you use this general formula. Y is the integral of u of t, that's the one you have to compute, times g of t, which is this term on the right. So in our case, that became 1 over t. You integrate u of t times g of t. Then you get this constant that's floating around from taking integrals. And then you divide by u of t. And this will be your general solution. And so, well, we just did a, a calculation. And there we go. Pretty easy? Not easy. 
So on the homework, there's a, uh, I think I put about three, three of these on there for you to work just to get the hang of it. One, I mean, here's the nice thing. The interesting part was actually figuring out that that was a good method. Right? That, that's all in the course notes. Then, once you have these formulas, it's just, can you compute integrals? Now, I can come up with differential equations, for nice first order ones, linear, where this method is not going to help you a whole lot because you can't compute the integrals. For instance, I might make this p of t e to the t squared. And it's a good little challenge problem to try to find an antiderivative for e to the t squared. Try that. See if you, if you get one, please email it. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we are going to talk about a new kind of substitution. It's really a substitution still, uh, but it's a little trickier. It's called integration by trigonometric substitution. I recommend you read ahead of time if you've got this uh, Calculus the Easy Way book. They have a nice chapter on it. Or even just peek around shop with outline if you have it. I'll try to talk to the folks today if I can.